West here reporting from Houston, Texas for Climate Desk. Now one of the biggest uncertainties in climate science right now is the role of clouds. What better way to work that part out than flying right through them? That's what NASA scientists aboard this aeroplane think. Welcome to NASA's biggest airborne laboratory. You're coming with us today on an eight hour NASA flight mission. When you read these big IPCC climate assessments, mm -hmm. what's the biggest uncertainty? There's two, right? The role of aerosols and how and clouds. Clouds is probably bigger than aerosols. But that is a piece of a puzzle that right now we are missing. You can't get the models right if you don't understand the chemistry and the process. Now we're being told we've got to get on. The doors are about to shut, so let's go aboard. you turn on the weather, every time you hear a climate change prediction, that information has to come from somewhere. And it starts by getting sucked out of the air from planes like this. So this mission is to particular try to understand the emissions from the surface, so mostly biogenic emissions, so from trees and other plants. Right now we're flying to our very first part of this experiment on the DC-8. Over Arkansas there's a particularly pungent bouquet of emissions that scientists are interested in measuring. Well these emissions lead to both aerosols and to molecules that both destroy and create ozone. So these are very important things to understand for climate studies. How it, manif how it will manifest itself, it will be in more accurate and more reliable predictions. So what we're doing is taking a series of flyovers, each at a different level of the atmosphere, scooping up those emissions, testing them, and hopefully scientists are going to see exactly what's in this column of air all the way up. The data that we collect in one flight can keep busy 60 scientists and uh, students for three years, four years. We are still studying data from data collected 20 years ago. In fact, this particular mission today is its most heavily equipped in its nearly 30 years of service. Each one of these consoles here is a specially equipped scientific instrument designed to collect all sorts of different data in real time. And this instrument here tracks the sun. We're looking at mist chambers. They're used to strip soluble gases. This black line is the CO2. It's it's about 390 ppm right now. We're putting these filters in the bags that we've got the aerosols that we trapped out of a certain amount of air. And so we're sampling up here about 150 liters a minute. That ultimately flows back into the operational models. It flows back into what goes on TV every day. Anyway, I gotta get this yes, sample going. You do it. It's a busy man at work. We can't let him rest. Well, get this, we've just spent two hours crisscrossing this one cloud formation. In, back out again, back in again. And then they grow, and we track them as long as we can, and then we let it go. Even one cloud can hold a host of answers to the mysteries of climate change. The patterns of, you know, where the clouds are, what type of clouds we see, what kind of weather systems they're associated with, it, that'll all be shifting in a, in a shifting climate, in a, in a world with climate change. And the big spark is this, is when we actually get the meat on the grill and then it will be some time <laughs> to process it.